Welcome to this session. We are going to talk about Agile and Agile techniques. Um, welcome team. You are the Joomla team for working on the new version of Joomla. It's the Joomla 5. We are going to be creating the Joomla 5 version. What do we want to have for Joomla 5? We have asked the community and the community came to us with these five things that we want to have in Joomla 5. We want to improve the multilingual content management. We want to create a menu item from the content article. So like in Joomla 1, you can go to an article and create a menu from there. We want to record action logs and the super admin should be able to see what uh, what's happening uh, in the Joomla installation. We want shareable draft content, so we want to be able to do like uh, WordPress, click the draft button and then uh, have a link to visit how my content will look like in the website. We want uh, all the JavaScript to be unit tested, we want to improve the quality, and we want browser automated test for the whole CMS. This is all the tasks that we all need to do here. Uh, where are the cards now? Ah, okay, I see. Okay, good. So, yeah, just for a second. Uh, imagine that you are the project managers of uh, Joomla 5 and you need to achieve all these things. Uh, just think for a minute, how are you going to organize this project to make it happen? You will probably think you will probably think in the waterfall model. So we will grab all the requirements, we will do the design, we will work on the implementation, then we will do quality assurance to make sure everything is okay. And finally we will do the maintenance. But in the 2009 the, uh, the chaos report of the IT project's failure came to the conclusion that the 68% of the IT projects failed, <coughs> which is a huge number. Imagine if the 68% of the architecture projects fail. I mean, houses fall with people inside. We cannot, I mean, <coughs> how can we allow ourselves in IT to fail that much? We need to do something. And this is where Agile comes. So if you have a project, because one of these, uh, the reasons why they didn't succeed. Cards there? OK, so three minutes. Six. OK, three minutes, 36 seconds is the time that the cards took to get to the back. So, <coughs> Let's do it again. Uh, so I'm going to give you these cards and they need to get to the back. So you need to pass it. Same again. I want to bet. Uh, who, who can say how much it's going to take this time? How much time? Ideas? Three minutes? Four minutes? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. One minute, 37 seconds. Okay, you lose your chance now. Okay, so we estimate in two minutes that the cards are going to get to the back. So you can start. Okay, back to the talk. Where do, uh, where are we? Uh, the waterfall model is very good when we have. <coughs> Ready? <laughs> How much? It, uh, uh, it's, it was uh, about 30 seconds or less. <laughs> Good job, team. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do it again. Let's iterate over it. But remember that I want everybody to have the chance to see the cards. <coughs> okay. So do it well. Don't rush. <coughs> oh, everybody to see the cards. Yeah, everybody should. Everybody. Yeah. <coughs> so do it whatever you want. OK. Uh, what, how much time is going to take this round? Uh, yes? 130. 130? <coughs> okay. 
time. Well, back to the waterfall. Uh, the waterfall is good when we have very clear requirements for the project. But what happens when we don't have clear requirements? I mean, when the customer is changing their mind, when the uh, team is flexible, when we don't have the assets, I don't know. Things happen. No. And for that no. Moment, no. time, oh. for when that happens, we have all these agile methodologies that are going to help for us to succeed. In agile methodologies, mainly we are changing the waterfall model of a stable, uh, uh, starting on the requirements and finishing on ma maintenance. And we are going to switch to this. We are going to iterate again and again over these steps. And what we are going to have in agile is a team. Ready? OK. 57 seconds. Okay, last time for estimate. Uh, who who can guess the time? Zero. 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 So you know how to do it, and you think you can make it in zero seconds? <laughs> ah, so you okay. do. All of you think that you can make it in zero seconds? No. Five, 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 five seconds? No. Five minutes. Five. One minute. One minute. Yeah. One minute. Yeah. Yeah. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. It's your last opportunity, team. Okay. <coughs> so what we have in an agile methodology is people ready for change <coughs> and ready for respond to, to changing the requirements. Let's be more agile. Let's do this Joomla live all together with using some agile methodologies. There is many agile methodologies. You can check it all in Wikipedia. There's a lot of good explanations. We are just going to uh, see some of them. Okay, and one of the first one, who knows what's this? Anyone in the room knows what is this? What's this? Yeah. Which methodology is this? Scrum. Scrum, okay. Yeah, Scrum. So, yeah, so Scrum is one of the methodologies that uh, are available. In Scrum, we're going to go through these. We're going to go through this workflow. Yes. Done? <laughs> One minute and nine seconds. Uh, Almost. Uh, Good job. Good job. <laughs> okay, let's let's understand how how the uh, Scrum workflow works. Uh, in Scrum, uh, we have the product backlog, the spring backlog. This is the sprint, and at the end we have a deliverable. Deliverable. There's a little, little. Okay, what is the product backlog? The product backlog is mainly a list of the things that we need to do until we uh, finish the project. So if you remember, we have these five things that we want to do uh, to finish Joomla 5. And we want to do all these things during this uh, uh, process, this workflow. And at the end, we will have to have a deliverable. Uh, yeah, something that is <coughs> deliverable. <laughs> yeah, what is a deliverable? A deliverable. <laughs> That's right. Can you estimate the time it takes him to deliver the word deliverable? <laughs> yeah. Okay, the deliverable is something that has business value. It's not just working software. Yeah, you see uh, the difference? I, I, I will come here back again. Let's iterate over it. And we need to do, in two, four weeks, we need to have something to deliver. Okay, that's the important part of the workflow. So, to be able to <coughs> do 
deliverables in two, four weeks, we need to break in pieces the backlog. Regarding the deliverable, let me show you what is a deliverable and what is not a deliverable. This is the customer. <coughs> And let's say that we want to get Joomla 5, that it's like a car. If I deliver, you know, a wheel, a wheel with a, the two wheels with a stick, this is something that the customer do, do not understand. It's not a deliverable. A deliverable is more like this, like a scale, uh, I don't know the word for this in English. This is a scooter. Okay, a scooter. Then a bike, then a motorbike, and then a car. This is something that makes the customer happy because he can understand what we are delivering. <coughs> so what we need to do is to break the backlog in pieces. We have this backlog. And we need to change the way we understand the customer in, in Agile and Scrum. Uh, this, uh, the customer, it's usually, you know, a monster that uh, uh, requires things. But we need to change the relation and we need to turn the customer into a partner. We want the customer to be actively participating in the <coughs> backlog and deciding what is the deliverable that, we, that he needs. Uh, this role is usually done by the product owner. Product owner exists in many of the agile methodologies, it's not only Scrum. Uh, and that person is the, it represents the customer. It can be the customer or it can be an in-house person that represents that customer. And we will put the product owner to do a refinement of the task that we want to achieve for Joomla 5. We will ask that person to add points to every task that we, or every goal that we have. Uh, putting on value the, the business value of that item. For example, we have the shareable draft content. The shareable draft content, let's say that the product owner says, oh, we are far behind WordPress in, term, in terms of draft content. Because in WordPress, they have uh, this save draft button since the very beginning. And Joomla doesn't have it by default. So this is something, if we want to compete against WordPress, we really need to have it now. Now, it's very important. Okay, so the product owner says that the shareable draft content is going to be the most important thing that he wants first. So he's changing the order of the things that we are going to do. And usually what it happens to some companies that if they use zero to 100 points for uh, adding value, business value to the tasks. It often happens that the tasks under 65 points, they are just not going to happen ever. So you can scratch it there, leave it for later. In this case, we are removing three tasks that we don't think they are valuable for the market right now. So now we have a short list and we are going to ask to the team to do an estimation. <coughs> so we need to estimate these three tasks. Shareable draft content, improve it multilingual content, and create menu item from the content article. And we are defining each of these tasks in what we call user stories. The user stories is a, a text that describes the scenario uh, with this uh, format, given, when, then. In this case, I want to, the scenario is drafting a content, a draft an article like WordPress. So given there is a content article with a title, my first Joomla article, when I draft the content with title, my first Joomla article, then I should see a message with a link to preview the article in the Joomla web page. So when I click this save draft, I will see a warning message on top that says post draft uh, updated preview post. And I can click that link and it will take me to, the, uh, to preview the article. So let's back to the user story. 
Okay, I have a second scenario. Uh, review drafted article. Given there is a content article with title da 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 that has been drafted, when I click in the preview draft link, when I click in that link, then I should see the article in the Joomla web page. I should be able to preview how my article is going to look like. Okay, now it's time to do uh, estimation. <coughs> I want you team to help me to estimate how much effort is going to cost this. So who has scrum cards at the back? Who has scrum cards? Okay, you. Please share the group of there's three scrum cards per uh, group. Yeah, please share. So share. Who has the scrum cards there? No one? Ah, please share, share like three of you to have scrum cards. Divided by groups and ready? Okay. Okay, we are going to do an estimation. Just keep it, keep it, keep it, the person who has the scrum cards. So I will say one, two, three, and at three, you will rise the card that you think it represents the effort that it's going to cost us to do this feature, okay? So let's do a, a try, uh, let's try. Uh, <coughs> one, two, three, okay? Which one are you, which one you took? Okay, I see an M, an L, you have no idea. Uh, is this XS? Yes. Okay. L, is L really? No. L, okay. So why, why do you think, Ruth, that it's an XL task? What do the others think? Do you think it's yes. XL or will you put it an M or a, uh, the average? I think it was a ML. So um, it's surprising that someone just say XL. It's good to ask why, why she thinks it's XL because maybe others haven't thought on on something that could add more effort and could make us fail on the estimation. Okay, let's say that uh, it's going to be an M or an L. Since I didn't know when I create this presentation how much is going to be the estimation, I will I give it uh, five points. Oh, you'll see that later. Okay, let's do it again, but with this second task. The task of improved multilingual content management. So, um, for, uh, as description for this task, we have this. We don't have a user story, we have this. So please uh, read it. How many documents? <laughs> good, there's questions? Okay, good. Uh, before this question, let, let's do the estimation, okay? Uh, back again. One, two, three. <coughs> Why are you using the question mark? I have no idea. You have no idea what you need to do. No idea. What? Excel. Good. Uh, the, I think that this task is not well described. So it's really hard to estimate. Uh, and as a result, I will probably say to the product owner, you need to describe better this task because we, don't, we have no idea what, what, what we need to do here. So we are going to remove that also from our backlog. We are going to give it back to the product owner and we will wait for him to come back. Meanwhile, we have estimated these two tasks in five points each. It could be uh, M size, it could be R, whatever. With this, we can estimate the cost that it's going to take to do this sprint, okay? So we have money here. But the task of estimating is not something that should be done by the project manager. The project manager is something that it doesn't exist in Scrum. Instead, we ask the team to do the estimation because it's going to be more real 
And we have to do to achieve these two things in one sprint. So we have a big product backlog and we have turned it into two things that we need to do. They are estimate and we put it in the sprint backlog. From here, we are going to iterate until we have, until we are able to do it. Let's start our sprint. This is uh, my sprint, to do, in progress, done. We have the two tasks, we have five points, estimate five points for each. So let's start working on it. Okay, I can, this is a very simple table. It could be more complex, it could be a Trello, it could be a Jira somewhere, it could be whatever. But basically, I'm just moving the task here, and putting my face here because I'm working on it. Uh, let's say I need other person to participate to, uh, like a front-ender or QA or whatever. I will change my picture for that person. I, I will wait that person to work on it until we finish and we are able to move it to done. So this is going to happen in between these two or four weeks. It depends what we agree. Maybe some teams decide that it's good two weeks, some teams decide that it's four weeks until we have something to deliver. And every day, we will gather all together to do a stand-up meeting. So I need everybody to stand up just for a second. Stand up. Okay. <coughs> we are going to do a a meeting and we are going to ask to all of you three questions. What did I accomplish yesterday? This is what I did yesterday. What I'm going to do today? And what obstacles are impeding, impeding, impeding my progress? <laughs> Why do you think we are doing this standing up? So let me go to sleep. Huh? So let me go to sleep. Yeah, good. So, well, we, I don't want you to be comfortable yeah. because if really tiring to listen in all the, your stories. We don't want to listen everything. We just want to know, basically, if there's something preventing you to finish your work. This is what, so you can now stand there, uh, sit down. Thank you. We will do that every day. Every day we will do that, to identify if there's something not working, okay? So I was able, finally, to finish this task this is still in progress, and uh, the time is running. So at the end of each sprint, we will record the time that it has taken for us. Not the time, but the points. We did points here, we did time here. We will record how much we estimate and how much we finish, uh, we complete. So we can see that, for example, <coughs> here we didn't do any estimation, but now uh, and we did it in three minutes. The next time, the next iteration, the next spring, we say that it, it was going to take us two minutes, but it took 30 seconds. So this is also not good. I mean, if the people don't have nothing to do in, in this one minute and a half, it's also a bad estimation. We say it again, we fail again here. And finally, we more or less did it. Uh, we estimate one minute, it took us one minute and nine seconds. So that was a good estimation. Because uh, now, thanks to the iterations to do estimating and again and again, I know that you team are uh, able to do more or less 10 points on each sprint. If I'm a project manager in uh, not in Agile, but in the waterfall model. I'm just one person that needs to think for all of you, that needs to estimate how much time it's going to uh, take to do the, product, the project. Uh, instead, in Agile, we are, everyone is participating. Everyone is, uh, uh, is responsible for the time that they think that we are going to spend. And let's say we failed miserable miserably uh, to achieve something. So <clears throat> what we do at the end of each sprint, of each iteration, is the uh, retrospective. So 
Uh, you can do it in many ways. For example, I could mm, throw, uh, um, I can say, why we said that we were going to take two minutes, but it's only, only two, three, 30 seconds. Why? I need the uh, answers. Uh, that, does anyone know why we failed? Why, why we failed here? Wrong estimation. Wrong estimation. We cheated. We cheated. Yeah. Yeah. We cheated. Yeah. Okay. Put our time problems. Yeah, I, I was not aware. I didn't know. I, I'm trying to organize it, but it's very important your opinion and how. What? Uh, I think it was because we didn't understand what it is. Yeah. Okay. We we wrong uh, interpreted the first iteration. That's why we underestimated the or overestimated the time, or we have no clear the, the tasks to do. That's why this this big difference from estimation to organization. So how can we do better next time? So doing it again with the third iteration. Okay. I think the proposal or, or the, the proposal is to try and but just to lead and maybe even write it steps to implement and getting it verified somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Having clear instructions at the beginning. Yeah, more clear instructions. Yeah. That was that was my fault. Probably next time uh, we do we can repeat this presentation afterwards. Yeah. And I can next time I will do Better. I will explain better how to do this. Okay, okay, thank you. So we got a re re retrospective and we got value. Um, thanks to the retrospective, we improve all together and we will do better. We will probably be able to do more points <coughs> next time. <coughs> Let's talk about a different uh, agile methodology. Uh, we were talking about Scrum, which is one of the available Agile methodologies to organize projects. Uh, let's talk about other uh, methodologies. In this case, we have behavior-driven development, uh, more known as BDD. Uh, do you remember this? It was a user story. It's something that we use a lot in Agile too. This is a given then when idea that we mentioned before. So uh, we are going to do a simple example of uh, behavior-driven development. Uh, we have a scenario that it's a successful login. Given that I am a registered administrator, username admin, when I log in into Joomla administrator with username admin and password admin, then I should see the administrator dashboard. The cool thing, well, uh, using user stories is just a good practice, but the, there's also a cool thing. We can turn this into an automated test. So this is what you are going to see in action. Uh, don't worry, I have the video here. Okay, this is my test and this is my PHP Storm editor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this test against Joomla. So I <coughs> open my terminal and I say uh, to code section, which is a testing framework, I'm going to say run the administrator feature file. And what it's going to do is automatically open a browser and it starts, in, it starts running my test automatically. I can see the steps that it's happening, so as you see, is opening Joomla, is entering the admin, admin, click the button, and done. So this is uh, also a really cool technique because uh, I have, <coughs> at the end, if I do this all the time, I have the business value, the user story, before I do the software, and at the end of the development, I have a, already a test with this. So I'm documenting my software. Do you know, usually we do first the software and if we have time, maybe we do the documentation and maybe we do the test. This is the other way around. We are going to do the documentation first and the test first and then the software comes. So it's really cool. So how the uh, test driven development and BDD is similar? Or Sorry? Uh, so when you say behavior uh, driven development, and test driven development. Is it similar or there is like other difference? Well, mm, we'll can share a beer later and discuss it.
state can be used as a business process. Okay. okay. Uh, I know you have many questions. I'm not going to about this uh, BDD. If it has many of those uh, features you want to develop, uh, will it be a sort of book? Or I mean, do you, do you have different files with all the tests in it? Yeah, I know you have a lot of questions, but I'm not going to answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, instead, I, I'm going to invite you to uh, to check all these techniques because they are very generic. So I I know that you maybe you are thinking, oh, how can I use all these techniques in my workflows? Uh, we can share a beer later, and we can. Uh, but I'm, I'm not really a specialist in Scrum, Agile, or methodologies. I'm happy to help in what I can, but I'm not, I'm not an expert. Um, anyway, I think this is the most important uh, here. Uh, I, uh, is there anyone here speaking Japanese? Uh, no? I heard a word in Japanese that is kaiten. Kaiten? Yeah? So and it more or less means the continuous improvement. I think it, it, it gets the idea of what, what I, I want to explain. It's not that you need to be from now in ahead a super screw masters or that you need to apply all these agile methodologies to your workflows. You're probably doing good. Uh, but there's a lot of ideas so you can improve your current workflows with all these techniques. And it's not that tomorrow you need to implement everything. Just Go step by step. Just check all these techniques, and some of them will be useful for you, some of them will not be useful for you. And maybe you will get that technique and you will readapt it to your needs. So this is going to happen. So think on this continuous improvement, like learning to play the guitar, you know, sit down, try, 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 and iterate again and again until you get better. And I'm going to finish my presentation with the Agile Manifesto that you can find in, uh, find in agilemanifesto.org. <coughs> uh, when we talk uh, about Agile, it is individuals and iteration over process and tool. Uh, it's not about the process. It's not about the final process. It's about people. And we want people to communicate. So it's the only way to get better. It's the only way to improve. And we want working software over comprehensive com documentation. Well, um, we also want deliverable, something that is useful. We don't need to do software per se. And we want to collaborate with the customer uh, over uh, just a negotiation and a contract. And we want the customer to be actively participating in our backlog and defining what do we want to achieve? And we want a team ready to change. Because maybe the market changes while we are working. But we have uh, small iterations. Every two weeks, we are starting again uh, all this process. So we are really flexible. And we are really <coughs> ready to <coughs> adapt ourselves to the new market needs. And that's all. That's all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.